we're taking a deeper dive into how the FBI was able to identify the Lady of the Dunes. The woman was found in Provincetown in 1974, but we didn't learn her name until yesterday. WBZ's Mike Sullivan looks at what changed and what's keeping detectives from solving more cases like this one. It's a case we have covered since the 70s, a mystery left unsolved until now. We can finally say her name. Ruth Marie Terry. She is the Lady of the Dunes. For nearly 50 years, she remained without a name. Science eventually caught up to her. Investigators trying new tools. One of these methods is investigative genealogy. Using the DNA of an unknown victim and comparing it to a large database of people's DNA. To track their family tree, to build their family tree, and then to think about, you know, who in that tree, yeah, is the missing person. Pam Loritzen is with the DNA Doe Project, a nonprofit and pioneer in the field. We still call the, the landscape right now in investigative genetic genealogy the wild, wild west. Currently, investigators and the Doe Project push their DNA searches through databases like GenMatch and Family Tree DNA. Because those two companies have allowed the use by law enforcement. For privacy reasons, major DNA tracing companies still restrict access, despite having a game-changing database of DNA. Ancestry and 23andMe have more than 20 million profiles, and the databases that we're using, I think, have something like eight. More profiles means quicker, more accurate results. The FBI has developed their own investigative genetic genealogy team. Except they are reserved only for violent crimes. The district attorney of the Cape and Islands would like to see the use of these tools expanded in the state. In an effort to have uniformity of use of this technique, we would like to see that legislation passed into law. That way we don't have another case covered for 50 years without an answer. In Provincetown, I'm Mike Sullivan, WBZ News.